thank you for the intro. Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Dan Miller. I'm the CEO and founder of Level Therapy. And Level Therapy is a telemedicine app that provides video access to psychotherapists as well as treatment tools. And so today, I wanted to talk a little bit about designing for stigma. And specifically, not designing to excite stigma, but designing when stigma is inherent in your user base. And so we've learned that Americans in the United States do not access therapy as much as they should. And the main reason is because of stigma, cost and access. But stigma is the major barrier. And so today, today I want to talk a little bit about designing for that. And so who should be involved in the design process, why it's an important design goal from our perspective, uh, especially working with behavior health, um, and how to go about this. Um, and first, I want to talk about who should be involved. And to do so, I want to tell a little story. And so Level Therapy was born out of a problem that I had myself. And so I was wrapping up my first startup at the end of 2014 and going through some major life changes, a rough breakup and a rough startup uh, end, and wanted to get back to some sort of baseline. So at the beginning of 2015, I wanted to speak to a therapist because there was just too much going on in my life and I needed to make sense of it all. And I tried one of our competitors and just had a really, really off-putting experience. And so... The pricing model was off. I had to buy a bundle of sessions before I spoke to anyone. The branding was off, uh, and I left feeling more like a number than an actual person. So I was really, really close to the pain point that all of our consumers actually feel. So instead of actually booking that second session, I put together a team and started working on this company. And so this is my co-founder. She's a licensed therapist, and her name is Coley Williams. And so Coley, we found out, was actually experiencing a lot of the same pain points on her side of the market. All right, so she had her own private practice in Los Angeles. She wasn't trained to uh, know how to start a business. She didn't know how to market to individual patients, manage billing, um, or do any of that. And she just felt a little bit helpless. And so we found that she had experienced a lot of the same pain points from her side of the market that I did around the same time period. And this was extremely important for us to figure out how to design an amazing experience from, the, from a clinical standpoint, but as well as from um, an actual patient standpoint as well. And so secondly, why is designing for stigma an important goal? Well, first, because the state of mental health in the United States is worse than this guy. No, but seriously, it, it's pretty terrible. And so it's the largest reason that 26 million Americans don't access treatment each year the others were costs and, and access that I mentioned a little earlier. Uh, workplace stress contributes to 120,000 deaths per year and approximately $190 billion in healthcare costs. This is not just an issue that affects individuals. It affects us aggregately as well as our economic output. And so serious mental illness causes over $100 billion approximately in lost earnings as well. So there's a tangible dollar amount that mental illness affects our economies, our employers, and ourselves, uh, but also it limits our potential. And so this is definitely all in the air when all of our, our users are downloading our app and using our experience. And so we thought really, really critically about all this while we were designing. And so lastly, how do you go about this? What does the process look like? And so this is an actual quote from one of our first meetings. Um, after my experience, I said, nothing, like, we're not going to design anything that looks sterile or was, looks like it was designed by a hospital. I wanted to stay away from blues and gradients and turquoise colors as much as possible. Um, but as you see, we did not do a good job at all. <laughs> um, finally, actually, the control ended up performing the best. And we tried you know, palettes and colors that you find in nature, other analogous kind of industries that had to deal with stigma. Um, but this was the one that um, our users and patients responded to best. Um, and our goal at, at a high level was to focus on evoking trust and professionalism, but we still wanted to pu push the industry forward a little bit. So we wanted to be a little bit progressive. So we took some risks and the grading is part of that. And so here's the experience, the onboarding experience. And so we, again, we thought really, really critically about um, all the copy, um, every single thing that we did uh, you know, initially that our users experienced. And so um, the tone's really, really conversational with all of our copy. So we explain that we're here to help, that you can talk from anywhere, and that we really care about you. Um, 
So again, really, really focusing on the trust aspect here, because in the onboarding experience, we have a couple of seconds, a couple of swipes to really uh, build some trust with the patient. Um, and this, this tended to work, actually. Uh, we provide a 20-minute free consultation to all of our users as well. Um, again, this is to uh, build a lot of trust. So we lower the barriers of entry as low as possible um, to actually get a patient that wants to talk to a therapist to talk to one. And so after you enter your homepage, your dashboard, and you book your free consultation, uh, we connect you with one of our licensed intake specialists. And so here we ask you four questions just to get a sense of what you're experiencing. So in my experience, I noticed that all of our competitors are not leading with a learning approach. They just show a directory of clinicians and they leave it up to all of us to understand how to discern one therapist from the next and who to work with. But it doesn't work like that in reality. So we ask a couple of questions just to get a sense of, A, what you're experiencing, as well as if you have any preferences for the type of clinician you'd like to work with, you know, whether that's male, female, um, ethnicity-based, et cetera. Uh, here's one of our clinicians. Um, so after you go through the uh, intake process, we recommend three uh, clinicians based upon what you're experiencing uh, and the state that you're located in. Um, after you choose your therapist, you actually engage in the consultation. If you want to continue to work with that individual, you can work with them or choose any other clinicians in our practice. Um, afterwards, again, to make sure that we're building trust and getting a sense of whether we're doing a good job with matching the experience, the technology, et cetera, uh, we ask every single um, patient how their session went um, and comparable to Uber or any other kind of uh, rating system, any three stars or below, uh, we have a couple of uh, actual pop-ups um, and get down to some specifics, excuse me. Um, and that's it. And so. Thank you very much. And uh, lastly, I do want to say that um, if anyone out here is experiencing anything uh, difficult in their lives um, that have thought about speaking to a therapist, um, definitely seriously consider it. Um, it empirically and, and scientifically works. Um, and you never know what's on the other end of that. So I would just say there are some, some tools out there to help you. Thank you. Dan, thank you.